I'm making this video today to show how I frame my flies and photos. I didn't really find anything online that really helped um, or really showed how different processes and different ways of doing doing it. I've uh, framed a bunch of different flies and different in different frames recently and have kind of done some trial and error and so I'm just going to kind of show my process for doing it. So I use flies for my boutonnieres for uh, my wedding and as like a wedding present for the groomsmen I ended up doing these uh, frames with a photo of all the of me and the groomsmen and the fly that they used and then I just uh, give it to them as a present. Um, so far, the people who I've given them to have absolutely loved it, and I think they've turned out really great. So, as you can see, it's just a 4x6 photo, um, and then the fly. The fly I mount on a on some beads. Hopefully that focuses enough that you can kind of see the beads. And these aren't necessarily a shadow box frame, but uh, they work great, and I'll show you that in a minute. I also did... Um, my f my fly, which I use for the boutonniere, with a larger photo, and then also the first sample fly that uh, was tied for uh, before doing the groomsman flies. So it's slightly different than the groomsman flies, but it's kind of like the first one that was done. Uh, by the way, these were tied by uh, myself and one of my groomsmen, Scott Norris, who some people watching this video probably know. And this uh, was done in a frame, uh, a shadow box frame I got from Winners for like $15. And I think that turned out great. So I'm going to just try to be quick about this and show you everything that I do. These are the frames I get. They're from Michael's, um, like a craft store. I'm not sure if they have them in the States, but uh, they might. I'm not sure. Um, they're just basically like a CD and um, CD cover uh, frame. The frame size is right there, 6.5 by 12 inch. And the reason why I use this frame is that they're fairly deep back. Now, this one's still in the wrapper, so I just want to show you what it looks like before you use it. And then here's one that I haven't built up yet, but I've opened it up just to show you. So it's got the backboard, which is just like kind of like a cardboard kind of stuff. You've got your paper garbage. Don't need it. Um, this is the mat board that comes with it. It's just like a white thin mat board. I use this to cut the border around and I'll show you that in a moment. So you want to hold on to that and then some more scrap paper. So basically this is what you get and now you can see how deep this frame is has these bend down tabs and the, the frame is very deep. So like I said, this isn't a shadow box frame, but I'm basically making it into one. So that's basically what you get. So I'm just gonna put that aside now that I've shown you that and show you how I do it. This is all the stuff that I've used to do these frames. Um, you know, you need your knife. I use a bobkin for putting the hole in the back. Uh, wired, different colors, black, silver, and I have gold as well for mounting the flies because some flies use silver, a silver hook, black hook, or gold hook. I've got beads for uh, mounting the flies to keep the flies off the back of the paper so they look, you know, like they're not squashed onto the paper. Um, two different sizes, uh, smaller beads for the head of the fly where, you know, you tie your line on because it's a little bit wider there, and then a bigger fly for the for the actual at the bend tape um this is a mat board cutter you can get these at any um uh, any craft store and some glue and some other stuff so here's one which i have recently done and it kind of shows pretty much the completed state before I putting it all back together so i'm going to pop this out and just show you what this side looks like so i put it down so what I did was I got, I bought some black mat board and you get a huge sheet of it for like 18 bucks or something like that. And it's really high quality. It's got like that white core. So it's a nice black paper. And when you cut it, 
It has this white border that shows out and it really stands out. Um, originally, I cut the this hole, the first one uh, for the fly too large. And instead of cutting, you know, redoing the mat board, I decided to try cutting another piece. And I ended up loving how it looked because it really made it look like the fly was separately framed. And it really kind of makes the fly stand out that little bit more. Um, the white border here is that white mat board that comes with the frame. So I cut it just a thin, so it's a thin outline. And again, um, the reason I did that was because it's a black frame. So I feel like doing this white mat board kind of almost imitates the white core there. And it just adds a little bit more to the frame. You know, it's just those little, little differences really add a lot in my opinion, cosmetically. So basically flipping this over to show you the backside, you, I cut all the mat boards and um, if you're doing multiples, the smart thing to do is to do one like such, right? You do one and then trace it onto all the other cut uh, pieces of mat board and then cut them out instead of remeasuring every time. So I've had, I had all of these pre-made and that's what takes really the longest is doing the mat board. So you got your mat board all taped up. I just used tape to hold this back piece on. Um, I eyeball, you know, you measure twice and cut once because if it's off on a little bit of an angle, you really notice it. You want everything to be squared. So really take your time. Um, and then I just taped the photo into the back as well. Now to space it, what I did was I found uh, the thickness that I needed the spacers to be. And I thought about getting some like wood dowels and cutting those and trying cardboard and all this stuff. And what I ended up using was some craft foam. So this is craft foam, different sh four sheets of it, which I glued together. Um, I let it dry for quite a while and then I cut the little cubes out. So here's like a little cube. So then um, what I found was that they were slightly still too thin. Um, if I had added another piece of foam, they would be too thick. So what I did was I took scrap uh, mat board, which, you know, like here's a piece here that came from the center. So this is all scrap stuff. So I just cut those out and then glued them onto the top of the foam. So you can see all the different spacers glued in there individually. They're all individually glued on. Um, they weigh next to nothing. So they don't really add any weight to the frame whatsoever. And it's a lot easier than say trying to make a nice channeled, you know, like a full inner frame out of wood or something like that. This was really easy, really quick, works really well. And nobody's really gonna be looking at the back. So it doesn't really matter what it looks like. These pieces in here are again, scrap pieces of mat board. And the reason why I put those in is that that's where the tabs for the back of the frame are. Um, such as if you're uh, putting the board back in, you fold those down to hold it, but we're not going to use those to hold the back on. So what I do is I put those there and then I fold these down individually on each one and then put it really tight. And what that does is it holds the uh, board down nice and tight, but this is still slightly um, small, the, the board. So it, it allows for a little bit of adjustment. So you can see it like up and down there. So you, you, and a little bit side to side. So you can cut the mat board a little bit smaller to allow for a bit more adjustability because you want to be able to center everything. It's not going to be perfect. So having that little adjustability lets you kind of do the micro adjustments and then you fold those down and hold it and it's in there. It's not going to move. So it kind of holds this part centered and then stops it from moving. Now for the mounting of the fly, this is the back of the, the frame, which you can see here. And what I did was I put the mat board over top of it and then centered the fly to where I wanted it. Then I used a marker, made two dots and then um, took the fly off. And then I used my bodkin to just basically like screw, like just drill a little hole in there, just a little, two small holes. 
Once the holes were on there, I taped the white paper on, flipped this over, used a pin through the backside to punch two clean holes in there. I wouldn't recommend, you know, mounting the paper and then putting the fly down and marking the paper and then screwing the holes in. It, you know, it could kind of make the paper not look as smooth or whatever, you know. So doing it that way, the paper was like perfectly clean and nice, two small holes in there. Then I used some silver wire because it's a silver uh, hook and two beads through, uh, through, the, uh, through the hole and through the bead and then around the shank. I'm just trying to uh, get so it zooms. There we go. So that should be pretty focused. So you can see the wire going over the over the hook through the bead, and also at the head there you can see it through the smaller bead. Now you look uh, like this. You can see the bigger bead and the smaller bead, but the fly is perfectly level. So that's why I did the two different size beads because I I wanted it to look. You know, I'm giving this to people as a thank you for being in my wedding and stuff and as a gift. So I want it to be perfect. And I'm a perfectionist. So um, it kind of holds it holds the fly off. Um, not Obviously, you can see, like, you know, the hackle is still squished on the back. But this gives it that three-dimensional look, keeps it off the back of the paper enough that, you know, the, the wing and everything sits freely. But then it also doesn't put it too close to the glass and squish it against the glass. So once again, these are not shadow box frames, so they're very thin, right? Which is what I liked. A lot of shadow box, shadow box frames are very thick, like very thick frame. These are half the half the width of or thickness of a shadow box frame. So it makes it look nice on the wall, but you still need to make sure the fly is not too close to the glass and getting squished. So then you put the wire through the back, and I pulled it each way individually and taped it. If you really wanted to make it secure, you could put uh, probably, you know, just dab some super glue or something in the hole and that will make it from never moving. So once you have that mounted, basically you just put it on, on here like this. And then again, this has some movement. So this allows you to flip it over and center the fly into that, that square, you know, into that little frame framing part that you've made. Then what I do is once I have it exactly where I want it, I use electrical tape and I just tape the back down. Now, it probably seems a little like, what well, you know, you think, how is that going to hold or is that going to hold well? And to make it a little more secure, you can see this gap. Like this is a huge gap. Like this, the back of this board really doesn't fit very well. So what I do is I take mat board and I basically wedge it in there. Now, obviously the piece is not this big, but if you take a couple pieces in there and you do it at multiple spots, like so, and you do it on the sides as well, it stiffens it up, right? So you, you use these to kind of stiffen uh, or to, to make it more snug fit. And that way this thing isn't wobbling around. Make it so it's nice and snug and tight and then use electrical tape around the edges. So I'll just show you really quickly what I mean, or at least the finished product. If I flip this one over, you can see that this has all just been taped, all electrical tape. And you can kind of see there, there's that indent. So that indent there is the mat board, which I wedged in there just to kind of keep, make this stiffer and tighter. So now that's in there. Once all that mat board's stiff and everything's strained, I just put some electrical tape. And I use, like, a good electrical tape, right? Not, like, from a dollar store, but some good, like, Scotch, you know, 3M Scotch brand electrical tape. And then relocate the mount to here from there. And the finished product. Um, this frame is very light. Very light. So, uh... This will hang on a wall with just a tiny little nail, not a, no problem. You could probably make like a little stand if you wanted. If you wanted this on a table, you could make a little prop, you know, out of cardboard or or something like that. that you could just glue onto the back. Um, but I'm like I said, I made this so that it's framed. And then this one here, this 
frame because it's a shadow box. I'll show you the back. Actually didn't require me to tape it because it has the proper closures for it. But like I said, now this is a thin shadow box. Like, you know, I, I bought this one because I was really surprised at how thin it was, but you can even see how much thinner these CD frame boxes are or frames are quite a bit. And this is, and, and this big one's the, you know, the, the thinnest or narrowest or whichever shadow box frame I've ever seen. You know, a lot of the times they're really thick, you know, they're meant for, I don't know, baseballs and stuff like that. Um, and then if, uh, hopefully you can kind of see the fly, um, is very, uh, suspended perfectly. It's not squished. The hackle isn't squished against the glass. The wing isn't squished against the glass. Um, but it's away from the back and you get kind of that nice shadow look and stuff like that. So anyways, I hope this is helpful for people who are wanting to do their own framing. You know, you have a special fly, maybe the first, you know, a fly with the first fish you caught for steelhead, first trout, something like that. Um, or you tied a fly and you want to give something as a gift. These frames are perfect um, to fit the fly and a four by six photo. And I think they look really clean. And um, it's, it's a really nice little gift or even to yourself, you know, once it's on the wall, it looks great. And people come by and they go, wow, what's that? And that looks really nice. What are these, right? Kind of starts conversations and stuff. So if you have any questions or maybe you have a comment about how you do it differently, um, absolutely please leave a comment and that way others can maybe learn from your experience as well. So uh, happy uh, framing and tight lines.